Okay, in this video we're going to look at um, an example that requires us to construct the confidence interval for the mean and we're also going to look at how we can use our calculator to help us do that. So in this problem it says in a test of the effectiveness of garlic for lowering cholesterol 47 subjects were treated with garlicin which is garlic in a processed tablet form. Cholesterol levels were measured before and after the treatment the changes in their levels of LDL cholesterol have a mean of 3.2 and a standard deviation of 18.6. What is the best point estimate of the population mean net change in LDL cholesterol after the garlison treatment? And then in part B, they ask us to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean net change in LDL cholesterol after the garlison treatment. So in order for us to do this, uh, the first thing I'm going to take a look at is this question about the point estimate. The best point estimate for the population mean is the sample mean. And in this case, our sample mean is 3.2. So um, to answer part A, the best point estimate would be X bar, which is 3.2. The, the sample mean is always the best point estimate for the population mean. Okay, now in part B, they want us to construct the 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean net change in LDL cholesterol. When I hear that I want to do a confidence interval for the mean, the first thing I need to think about is whether or not I'm going to do a T interval or a Z interval. And what makes the difference between the two is whether or not I know the population standard deviation or sigma. If I know the population standard deviation and I have either a large sample size or my population is normally distributed, I would do a Z interval. If I don't know the population standard deviation, I only have a sample standard deviation, I still have to have either a large sample size or a normal population, but I would do a T interval because I don't know sigma. So when I read through this problem, it does give me a standard deviation, but it seems that this standard deviation describes the sample. It says the changes in their levels of LDL cholesterol have a standard deviation of 18.6. So that standard deviation uh, describes the 47 subjects. So in this case, sigma is unknown. Okay, and um, my sample size is greater than 30. It's large enough. So these are the conditions that I need so that I can do a T interval. Now I'm going to um, set this up to do it by hand because I want to show you something about uh, the T table. But the formula for doing the confidence interval for the mean is X bar plus or minus T alpha over 2 times S over the square root of N. Okay, S is our sample standard deviation. Of course, if we knew the population standard deviation, we'd be using a Z interval. Okay, so X bar in this case is 3.2. We'll come back to T in just a second. My standard deviation is 18.6, and my sample size is 47. Okay. Now, um, we could use the table to find this T alpha over 2, but you can also use your calculator to find it. Okay, so for us, we're doing a confidence interval, alpha, since we're doing a 95% confidence interval, alpha is 0 0.05. Okay, and it's a confidence interval, so that's going to be in two tails. Okay. 
for confidence intervals it's always in two tails also my um, and this should be a 47 my sample size is 47 so the degrees of freedom for the mean is going to be 46 it's one less than my sample size so on the calculator what I can do to come up with this number instead of having to use the table in the text is go to second vars we're going to use number four which is inverse T and it has a syntax of alpha uh, which is or the alpha that's in one tail and also the degrees of freedom. Okay, so we get 0 0.025 because split up over the two tails and our degrees of freedom we said would be 46. And so without having to go to the table, I get negative 2.0 one okay um, sometimes you may need to find that T value independently of what else uh, the calculator will do for us we don't have to do that step unless it's you know uh, specifically required if we're asked what the T value is the critical value is then that's how we would find it um, if I want to just go ahead and get the interval then what I can do is go to stat test and we are going to do a T interval so I believe that's option number eight okay we're gonna make sure stats is highlighted because they they're giving us all of the stats not a set of data okay our sample mean is 3.2 our standard deviation is 18.6 sample size was 47 and the level of confidence is 95 percent okay based on that information it knows to find this particular T value we didn't have to find that and so this gives us the confidence interval should be the same interval that we would get if we completed these calculations by hand